Hey guys, welcome back to a, another video in my series of tips and strategies. This is a game that I played on Miramar and I uh, already set it to two times. So we're going to kind of just jump in. I'm going to show you. Uh, okay, so you can see where the plane basically came in from over here. So it came down in this direction and myself and some other guys, uh, we all end up coming down into an area of Chumacera and kind of hit the ground and what I know is um, that I'm sort of ahead of the, the group, uh, the, the head of the pack. Boom, 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 boom. That guy goes down real quick. Gung Palk Kachu. I love everybody's names. Um, he ends up uh, taking out the guy that kind of came down right there. So what I do is I always like to try to hit these kind of buildings. And the reason that I always like to try to hit these buildings, and they're all over the place, all over the map, is you can usually find uh, level 3 gear um, as well as scopes. Excuse me. Um, uh, a bunch of things that are basically really good to have in the game you can usually find uh, in these buildings. So I had landed over there, hit that building really quick, moved up here, hit these buildings, and what I was doing is I ended up taking sort of a scenic route, uh, working around this hill. And the reason is because I wasn't 100% sure how many people were actually behind me. Uh, I knew at least three people, but I wasn't sure if there were more. I wasn't sure what direction they went. So long and short of it is I'm just trying to give myself a little bit of leeway in case there is somebody who's running in through here um, who's got an AR um, uh, and I think at this point uh, when I ran up into there I actually only had uh, I think I only had a UMP, so I couldn't really get into a, a a good fight with anybody. And I ended up finding some. Uh, I I found a scar, and I do not get into a fight with this guy. We we do not kind of cross paths. Um, so I had picked up a scar, and I had ended up finding an SKS in the buildings down in here. So unfortunately, I didn't really find anything where I usually find good stuff, but it uh, it actually worked out. So here's what I decided to do. Um, so I can see where the circle was. I knew how close I was, so it wasn't going to be an issue. And I knew that there weren't a lot of people coming over into this area. And the way that I play is I'm not looking to get into a fight right away for about the first 10 minutes if I can. Um, what I like to do is just kind of go off on my own, make sure I can kind of get some stuff that I need uh, so that I'm prepared to get into a fight later on. So there's a couple things kind of going on uh, back here. And we're going to look real quick at uh, a fight that just took place over here. And so please don't do it. Uh, he actually is uh, near the end of the game as well, so we will see him again. So he's coming up from the um, south end of Chumacera, and he works his way north. He's just looking for stuff. And here's kind of the situation. It's a, kind of a mistake on Gung Pao Kachu. Um, so he is at the top of this building, and this is where, please don't do it, he is coming up. Now, here's the thing. If you're ever on a building like this, the thing that you got to remember is, um, for the most part, there's no way to crawl up the side of the building. So in order to get to the very top of this building, uh, you have to go up the ladder. So this guy, uh, Gung here, he has all the advantage in the world. And he gives up his advantage. And so, please don't do it. Gets up here. He had taken a little bit of damage, I think, from a fall. So, he just decides to take a, um, a drink. Kind of look at it from his perspective. So, he can hear someone right above him. And boom, boom, boom. Takes down Gung. And the thing is, if you're ever on a building like this, like I'm saying, all the advantage 
is on you. You've got the advantage because no one can basically crawl up the side here. So if you're going to end up getting into a fight with somebody, it really should kind of be on your turn. So when Gung ends up jumping down over onto this side, he makes it a level playing field, plus he gives off the noise of jumping down. So uh, please don't do it. Knows at that point, all right, well, this guy just jumped down onto the same level as me, uh, so I don't have to look up and not know where he is. So uh, if you're in those situations, uh, just use the advantage and just be aware of the advantage that you've got. So we're going to just kind of move over just so you can see where I'm at. And then we're going to fast forward because I don't, uh, not much really is going on with me at this point. Uh, I don't encounter anybody in the area where I'm at over here. Uh, I'm just kind of looting and getting all of uh, some more stuff. So uh, the good thing for this game is, like I said, I had uh, an SKS and a SCAR. Uh, I didn't have a 4-scope or an 8-scope at the moment, but I was finding some boosts. I was finding some first aid kits. So everything I kind of needed to have, I had. Uh, the only thing I was missing at the moment, uh, like I said, really just a 4-scope for the SKS. So uh, other than that, I kind of got my guns tricked out, everything that's needed. So we're going to go ahead and uh, fast forward here. And we're going to move up. So now I've moved down to here. And these guys are coming out of Chumacera. It's Please Don't Do It in, I believe it's Geely? Gigi? I don't know. He makes an appearance here in just a few minutes. So all of these guys over here, we basically, um, myself, Please Don't Do It, uh, an Aram Fool, uh, we're all near uh, the end of the game, so we all make an appearance. Fisho ends up getting taken out uh, a little bit later on. So all that's really happening here is we are running all of us to get to the circle. And I just kind of want to show you where the circle is going to end up being and sort of the, the thought process of what happens. And I end up getting really, really lucky with the circles in this game. And it really does make a, a, a big difference. So when I'm coming out of Chumacera, I hit to here. Now I'm running up to this spot. Now I'm running down. I'm trying to get to the circle. And I know I'm going to take damage. But I never, ever worry about taking damage from the first or the second circle. Because there's just, it's just not enough damage to make a difference uh, in the game. It's just not. So don't ever worry about taking damage. So what I wanted to do was to, I did not want to head into Pekado. What I want to do is basically get right up in here. This is where I was trying to aim for. But I also realized at the same time, like, okay, well, if this next circle ends up being way over here, I need to kind of stay close to the to the road because if I have to find a vehicle I'm not going to find one up in the hills I'm going to find one next to the road so uh, until I'm kind of set and knowing where the next circle is I'm going to have to wait well the next circle does hit and when the next circle hits uh, it ends up being very very kind it's a very good very good circle so you can see that where I'm trying to head to now I know I can hit here and then I'm going to be able to kind of move up into the mountains as well so I uh, definitely don't need a vehicle and I'm a big big believer in if you don't need a vehicle don't get in it because you don't need it so here's the guy who uh, had come out of Chumacero he was one of the guys that dropped there and he's just kind of chilling and he's just kind of doing his thing um he's got an m4 uh he had i think right there a two scope uh he had some other good items uh he also <laughs> brought up a uh a uh, dune buggy so um i don't take it uh and so you can kind of see from my perspective what ends up happening here uh, so I'm coming up the side of the road or the side of the hill and I'm coming around and I don't see this guy just yet and uh, all of a sudden I see movement right there on my left actually I kind of missed it but I heard steps and this guy almost gets me down he actually sees me before I see him he starts shooting 
and um, I've got a scar with a red dot with a compensator and um, I think I had a foregrip on it or maybe I had a, an angled grip uh, I can't remember yeah I had an angled grip so uh, definitely from medium to short range you want to have an angled grip on your ARs so I raid this guy and I, I end up getting my four scope off of him I take some first aid kits and um, um, I don't remember if he had any boost I don't think he did because he wasn't taking any himself uh, to heal up uh, I can't remember the next guy that I get into a fight with he actually had a ton of first aid kits and boost and all that so again I, there's a dune buggy but guys I don't touch vehicles I leave them alone I don't want them because um, again it goes against my principle of what I think which is when you get into a vehicle you are giving away your position for free so I know I'm gonna be able to make this circle and the smaller the circles get the more likely it is that I'm gonna be able to run to each circle without ever taking any damage so all I'm doing at this point is slowly and cautiously just kinda of moving up uh, this direction and the next thing that basically happens is I work my way around here. I'm trying to stick to the shadows. I'm, I know I'm not going to be able to stay in the shadows, but I'm staying as long as I can because uh, I know where the blue circle is coming in. It's coming in really slow. So the next guy I end up seeing is this guy over here. It's VP718. And we're going to kind of look at it from his perspective. This guy has all the advantage in the world over me at the moment. Uh, I end up getting stuck behind the blue line over here. He had seen me movement right there, and he takes several shots. I go ahead and realize crud. This um, I'm actually in the blue zone and still taking damage at this point. So I go ahead and try to heal up because I know I'm going to have to get into a fight with this guy, but I just picked up a four scope with my SKS. So I know I'm going to be able to actually get into a fight with this guy. Uh, I'm going to be able to see him. So I have to heal up again because I peek around the corner. He sees me, takes damage. Boom, boom, boom. I'm able to get this guy down. So um, just to kind of see it from my perspective after looking at it from his, I'm taking damage there so go ahead and heal up and uh, the guy on the other side I don't really know I guess he didn't have a scope so I'm just able to kind of get those shots off because I've got a vertical foregrip so I'm able to get off the one shot um, he didn't have a four scope or an eight scope the, what he did have was a ton of uh, first aid kits and boost. Uh, in fact, I think this is the guy that when I took him out, he had 47 bandages, which I can't for the life of me figure out what in the world you're going to need 47 bandages with or for, but huh, he, he did. Uh, I think it was that guy. Yeah, it was that guy. Okay, so we end up getting up to uh, this point. So we're, we're getting actually near the end of the game. We're down to 15 players. And I'm going to go ahead and set it back to two times. Now, there's not really too many mistakes. So the only real mistake maybe for that guy is he could have put himself in a little bit better spot, maybe be in a more elevated position. But once we get into a fight, he's kind of limited in what he can do. And you can see from the top angle here, he didn't really have any place that he could go. Um, so he didn't have a scope, had to get into a fight. I end up having the advantage. I take him out. So here comes the, well, the plane, first of all. I'm going to let that go by. And at this point, there's a fight that's taking place over here between Sweet Carlo and Aramful. And Carlo um, had taken out Fish O earlier. Do, do, do. These guys just get into a fight. Carlo just kind of picked a bad spot to lay down. Now, I, I'm i hearing all of this going on over where I'm at. So I had actually worked my way over. You can see where I'm at over there. 
and I had taken several shots at Aram, and I hit him a couple times. Uh, it just wasn't enough to get him down. I moved back up. Uh, I'm moving over. I'm seeing if this guy will end up getting exposed over this side. So I'm taking more shots. I do some more damage to uh, Aram full there, and uh, it's just not enough to get him down. But it's it's enough that it's kind of bringing everybody over. So you can see where the blue line was, where I uh, I ended up, and now where the new circle is. So I go ahead and move into the new circle, and this guy it's getting really lucky in the fact that I can't actually see him he he came out of the the little village there before um, I could actually see him and he ends up making it to the wall over here he ends up chucking a grenade my way I hear it hit I take off running because I'm not a hundred percent sure where this guy is and so I work my way back around because I want to see if this guy's actually going to try to come back this way and try to sneak up. Because I realize that's a possibility. Uh, and he doesn't. Nobody ends up coming that way. And we get down to six of us. So please don't do it. He's the guy that was with me at the beginning. He's in a position here. He actually has, I believe, the M M24 or whatever the gun's called. It's the uh, big honking gun. And he is trying to zero in on Zediment down here. Now, Zediment ends up taking out another guy that was down here. And he tries to snipe. Please don't do it. Uh, please ends up moving out of the way because he realizes, okay, I'm, I'm not in as good a position as I want to be. Because this guy's got a sniper rifle. And uh, please don't, uh, did not have a rifle. So, we get down to five players at this point. And again, guys, this is where I just got really lucky. And uh, all I'm trying to say when I talk about uh, go up, anytime you have a chance to go up, uh, you, you want to do it. Now here's Zediment. And just to kind of, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now here is please don't he ends up knowing that Zediment he can hear him he knows that he's got to come up through that little passageway right there boom 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 gets him down and that's four four people left so nothing much has changed with me uh Aram Fool and Murph what is that guy's name Murph's Termania all right, well, maybe the last guy's name is Murphy. I don't know. So um, these two end up meeting each other here in a second. But all I really want to show you in regards to the map. So if you remember correctly, when the original decision I made to come to Pekado was I didn't want to hit the city. I wanted to come up through here. And I end up getting really lucky with these circles and that... I don't have to run to them. They kind of come to me. So what I'm able to do is to stay along this ridge line. The reason that's so important is because, as you can see, I'm the only person in the game at the moment. I'm in the highest possible area. I have all the advantage in the world. And all I'm really ever trying to say is when it comes to height, is height gives you an advantage. Uh, it'll it. It, it just makes a difference in allowing you to sort of be in a position to look down and to move to where it is that you need to do. do, do, do. So, good old Murph, he ends up getting Aram full down. So, I can hear those gunshots from my position. So, I start working my way over because we're getting into close to the final circle here. So, here's where tragedy befalls. Please don't do it. This guy is not elevated, and the sad thing is he can't get elevated. So right there is sort of his best opportunity to work his way around, and he can't. He ends up getting killed by the blue zone because he cannot get up here. So all the explosions going off is I had like five or six grenades at this point. So I just said, all right, well... I, I realize that I've got all the advantage. Now, I don't really think I'm going to end up killing anybody. 
with these grenades. And when I started chucking them, um, I did a win. There was three of us. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of them because at the end of the day, I know where my position is. I don't really need the grenades. And since I've got as many as I've got, let's see if I can't get one of the two guys, get them down. Um, because I know that they're going to have to kind of work their way into the circle at this point. So if at the end of the game, you got a bunch of grenades, just start chucking them. So I say that, and let's actually kind of look at what takes place. This isn't so much a mistake as it is just funny about... <laughs> okay, let's, 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 let's rewind it real quick. Because uh, you kind of need to see it from uh, Murphy's point of view here. Um, please don't. Isn't dead just yet. He's about to about to go down. So I'm chucking these grenades all over the place. Do, 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 do. You can see where Murphy is. He 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 was never in any danger. Uh, from my angle, I never would have been able to kind of hit him with a grenade, and I just chucked him all over the place. So he decides to throw a grenade back. Watch where it goes. Yeah, it goes straight up and then straight back down. So <laughs> he's got to take off running. So, okay, throwing grenades isn't really in his forte. So we get down, and now I can hear movement. When I hear movement, I know exactly where this guy is. And we'll kind of see it from my point of view. And uh, from his point of view, he actually sees the top of uh, my helmet. So I'm kind of looking around. I can hear the movement. I know I know where he is now. And he peeks up over here. So I can see the ridge, and now I hear him run left. I hear where he goes. I turn the corner, and I see just enough. And he definitely gets, like you can see, a couple shots on me. But... Because I'm elevated, I'm basically getting headshots on the guy because that's going to be sort of the biggest target in front of me. Um, that's one of the huge advantages in being in just even a slightly elevated position is going to end up being uh, being able to just see the uh, see it from his perspective. Because he ends up seeing me a couple times, but you're going to end up having more headshots on someone than sort of like a body shot. Um, just it, without even really having to aim, as long as you're hitting the person, you're actually getting those headshots. And you can see how much damage the guy actually did to me. He actually did a good job. The problem is I'm elevated. So, guys, you know, I had a uh, – it was a good game. Uh, overall, everybody played pretty well. Not a ton of mistakes in this game. Uh, players actually played pretty good. Um, but just any time you can, try to move into elevated positions because you will have a distinct advantage uh, in doing so. So, alrighty guys, thanks so much, and uh, we will catch you next time. See ya.